Hello, welcome to our discussion about content curation. I'm Stacia Johnson, a languages teacher, and I'm with Melissa Marsh, a special education coordinator. Melissa, what made you interested in content curation? I really just was looking for a way to organize all the information that I was being overloaded with when I was searching the internet for uh, my new learning or for my students, and I wanted a way to make that more accessible to myself. How about you? Well, for the past few years, I've been just bookmarking any sites that I've come across that are useful for my English, French, or Japanese courses, but I was finding those lists were getting so hard or so long and so hard to find information that when I watched E.T. Mook's session with Jeff Hale and he recommended some curation sites, I was completely taken and I've been using it ever since and it's saving me time. Great. So our project is all about curation and how it can make living and working in a world overloaded with information a lot easier. This project fulfills requirements for our 515 course with Professor Valerie Irvine at the University of Victoria. First, we will share with you the things we did and learned. Then we'll discuss what we found useful about curation for students and teachers. We began our journey about three months ago, sitting in Guido's Cafe. We worked on a learning plan while we were in a Google Hangout with our professor. This learning plan can be found at the following Google document link that I provided here on this page. And you can look into Melissa's journey on her Prezi presentation, and I've given the link here. And my own learning journey and activities are documented in a Penzu online journal. And again, the link is provided on this page. Some key questions guided us as we began our learning about curation. First, we needed to define curation and understand its value for teachers and students. Then we needed to understand how to curate and how to do it well, what skills and what tools are needed and what ones are useful. So we begin to, by defining curation. Howard Rheingold in his book NetSmart talks about how we direct our attention in the online world and that is what curation is. Based on our research, we found the following key aspects about curation. It's about organizing, presenting, and sharing. And it's also about choosing the best materials and resources from all the reading and writing we're doing and all the images and videos we're coming across. Curation also involves organizing content around a specific theme or context to create a story for a purpose or a particular set of people. As Howard Rheingold has said about curation, it is also about where we choose to focus our attention in this new digital culture. We came across many words that fit in our definition of curation while we were doing our research. Originally, we were thinking about social bookmarking and curation. This chart was helpful for us to understand the distinct differences between the two and ultimately helped us to um, narrow down our project to just curation because it is such a large area to study. So this chart by Nancy White shows the difference between collecting and curating. So why is curation important? First, it makes meaning and adds value to the information at your fingertips. As William Badke states, the ability to work with information may well be the most important skill of the 21st century. What I've noticed is curation helps keep you organized and it saves time in the long run. Curation develops our own and our students' literacies. And as Constantine, Horton, and Mormon note, millennials are inundated with information, and they need the ability to analyze and evaluate and construct meaning from it. 
Curation is the art of using the creations of others in meaningful ways to create your own content or understanding that will also be helpful to others. Being a member in this new digital culture requires not only a connection to people, but also to information. And being a leader requires being able to bring people and information together in meaningful ways. That concludes our definition, our growing definition of curation. This graphic is a combination of our learning from many writers and practitioners of content curation on how to curate. First, you must decide on what to focus your attention. Then, find and organize information and resources into meaningful packages. Next, you must verify that information and add to it to make it useful in a given context. Finally, you must distribute your new creation to your network and continue the conversation about the given topic. <clears throat> now that we understand what curation is, why it's useful, and how to do it, we decided to test out a few tools. Storify is the first one that I took a look at. This is a way to organize videos tweets, and other social media data into a story about a given event or topic. It's very easy to use, and it has a variety of ways to organize and add components. Pearl Trees is the next one that I took a look at. It actually organizes your information visually to look like trees, and they're linked together with other people's trees. It is visually appealing, and the Pearl Tree extension makes it easy to add new information while you're searching. The last one is Learnist. Learnist is like a learning signature and it is a combination of Storify and Pearl Trees in that it is a visually appealing and it allows you to tell a story about what it is you're learning or what it is you understand. And the Learn It button also makes it very easy to add new information. So I looked into Symbolu, Evernote and Scoopit. From the moment I heard about Symbolu, I started experimenting and using it. It is a great way to curate all your most frequented websites onto one page. The page ends up full of icons that you can just click on and you'll automatically go to the bookmark site. You no longer then have to bookmark on your home computer or favorite your work or look up individual websites by name, for example, on Google. Symbolu gives you the option of setting up different web mixes so you can have a page for useful educational sites for students or a home personal page, etc. Moving on to Evernote, what, from what I've learned so far on Evernote, it is a site where the information that you curate belongs to you. You own the information you put onto Evernote and not all curation sites offer this. Evernote allows you to curate student portfolios, and the way I used it is I curated about 12 websites that offer free pictures for teachers and students for educational purposes. I have provided the link on the useful links page. And the other curation site that I used and love is Scoopit. I like Scoopit because it makes it easy to share and scoop information. It also is very visually pleasing. The site allows you to curate and post like it becomes a magazine cover and you can comment on each item. Both Evernote and Scoopit offer suggestions and related material to the topics and themes you're curating. In order to get the most from your curation, I would recommend starting with one site and then moving on to experiment with others. You may run into glitches, but stick with it and over time you'll achieve mastery and the ability to curate for classes, presentations, and so much more. Here's a list of many of the best curation sites we found for education. Pinterest is being used by a lot of teachers to post ideas for student activities, and Themify provides magazine-style curated topics. One of the most useful Themify magazines I found is one about Web 2.0 tools for education. I've provided the link here. Curation is a learning process. Beth Cantor tweeted this, 
And although it can seem like a hierarchy, it shows also the stages toward mastering the art of curation. We encourage you to engage in your own research on this fascinating topic. These are some people who helped us form our understanding to this point on curation. Please learn with us. Stacia can be reached on Twitter at StaciaJo33 or at Madam Johnson85, Mademoiselle Johnson85 at gmail.com. And I can be reached at, at MellowMars on Twitter or melissa at gmail.com.